Hello, welcome to Maths with J. Last time we saw that we could calculate this volume using Cartesian coordinates, but it was really very tricky to do. And in fact, in this situation, polar coordinates will be a lot easier to use. So let's first of all remind ourselves of the important things about polar coordinates. We'll put our x and y axes in to start with, and now we'll add in r and theta. So you'll remember that theta is measured anti-clockwise from the x-axis, and we can see that r squared is x squared plus y squared. We could also write x as r cos theta and y as r sine theta, but you can see actually in the example we're looking at here that that isn't going to be necessary. The important thing is to just look at uh, what a small area would look like, because remember that when we use Cartesian coordinates, we're thinking about a small area, a little bit of x, a little bit of y gives us our delta a. So if we're going back to first principles, this is where our dx and dy are going to come from, in the limit as we shrink delta x and delta y down. But when we look at a small element in terms of our polar coordinates, let's just try and draw it over here. This is obviously drawn on a very big scale, kind of zooming in. So we've got a very small increase in theta, delta theta, but the arc length is going to be r times delta theta, and a little increase in r, delta r. So that means that when we look at our area of our little element, it's going to be r delta theta delta r, or changing the order, r delta r delta theta. So that when we come to do our integral, whatever our integral is, instead of dx dy, we'll have r dr d theta. So that's the really important thing to remember. So let's go back to our integral and put it in terms of polar coordinates. So we've got a double integral. Our angle is going to go from looking at our original diagram with the x and y, the x and y plane. Well, y was going from minus 2 up to 2, wasn't it? But if we think about the angle theta, that's going from the x-axis down to the negative y-axis. So that's going from minus pi by 2 and then up to the y-axis will take us up to pi by 2. And then the r, well, starts at the origin, so r starts at 0. And then it's, the, the semicircle has got a radius of 2, so that's going to go up to 2. And then x squared plus y squared is r squared, so we're integrating 4 minus r squared, because we're taking away x squared plus y squared. And then remember, it's not just dr d theta, but r dr d theta. So let's have r dr and then d theta. Now, this is really simple to do. We could actually separate out these two because there are no thetas in there at all. So we could think of this as the integral from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 of 1 d theta multiplied by the integral from r is 0 to 2 of 4r minus r cubed, multiplying out that bracket there, dr. So that gives us, well, integrating 1 with respect to theta will give us theta between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. And then integrating 4r is 4r squared over 2. And integrating r cubed is r to the fourth over 4. And that's between 0 and 2. So that gives us pi by 2 minus negative pi by 2, so adding on a pi by 2 there. And we'll have 2 times 2 squared, which is 8, minus 2 to the power of 4 over 4, so that's 16 over 4, so that will be 4. And then when we substitute in 0, both the terms will be 0. So we've got pi times 4, so we find that we get 4 pi. So the required volume is 4 pi.